And thank you for coming. So welcome, my name is Davide, and I work for Red Hat in the networking services team. Uh, today we are going to see how we are extending packet drill. The goal is uh, to do unit testing and sanity testing for uh, the MPTCP protocol. Yes, there has been already an MPTCP talk yesterday made by Paolo where he displayed uh, all the protocol, uh, all the efforts uh, in uh, doing the upstreaming process. And it was kind of successful because uh, we saw that merger than the Linux kernel and that's a very nice thing. Today we are going to cover up some uh, use cases and uh, how it looks like from the user perspective. And of course, we will see how we can test uh, MPTCP. So, and that's what, what we are going to do, a quick overview of the MPTCP status and uh, uh, some inner workings of packet drills and then if we will have time, we will see if you have any questions and answers and there are, there, there are candies for them, so don't be shy. So, uh, are we talking about something really new? Not, because the MPTCP specification is uh, uh, published since uh, uh, many years and uh, moreover there is an out of three uh, module that can be built and uh, in, you can already use <coughs> MPTCP on your uh, computer and if you have some Android devices also you can uh, use MPTCP and of course uh, there's iOS, iOS uses it uh, natively. Um, what is new here is uh, the protocol version which is uh, very new, uh, the RFC has been published a few weeks ago so there is version one, and it's an IETF standard. And uh, uh, what's new is, uh, uh, of course, uh, the um, official implementation for the Linux kernel, which uh, is going to be merged gradually in the next weeks. Then uh, what will become uh, the next uh, development will be the user space map path manager, which will handle the control plane and uh, uh, maybe something to do the flow scheduling uh, uh, in the correct way. Uh, yes, I put some references on the bottom of my slides. Uh, so in case you want, just download the presentation and uh, have a look at uh, the sources. So this is an open source project and uh, it wouldn't happen without a community. So first of all, I have really to thank uh, the MPTCP open source community. And uh, uh, I would like also to thank you if you are willing to contribute to any of these tools uh, and to the Linux kernel and of, of course to Packet Drill. Okay, so uh, yesterday there was uh, the question, what's the use case for MPTCP? There's this, there is this nice diagram from the IETF slides back in 2012, I guess. And this is the typical use case for MPTCP. So you have a smartphone client, there is a web server, and you can make use of uh, both the mobile connection and the Wi-Fi connection together to have a somehow better experience. So it's the typical use case, uh, Wi-Fi mo to mobile and over. So in this case, when you have two different paths to reach your server, uh, you can improve your experience if, if your sockets can survive after any failure. And maybe you can also have a better experience if sockets can aggregate the capacity of different links in order to achieve uh, a better throughput. It's not like, uh, so it's like a L4 bonding, it's not like a, a, a new thing. There are other different solutions to the same problem uh, SCTP is one of them, and Multipart Quick is another, and uh, well, now we have three. Okay, so how do we uh, um, use MPTCP for real? That is typically, uh, from the programmer's point of view, what you have to do to use the MPTCP protocol. The stack registers to the kernel using, uh, as a protocol for uh, uh, IPv4 and IPv6. So uh, you have to call socket using the new IP proto MPTCP. 
which has been extended to 16 bits in order to cope with the, this new value. And uh, then uh, after the socket is created, uh, you can operate the, the socket like it was a regular TCP socket. And uh, this is the example for uh, what happens to a server. So you just uh, uh, bind it to the address, listen, and then uh, when an incoming connection, uh, connection uh, is uh, detected by the kernel, you accept the connection, and then you can read and write bytes from the socket. Uh, this example is taken from the case of test. So we already have case of test in the uh, NetNext uh, kernel tree. If you want to see an example of client and server, please check out the sources. Oh, by the way, uh, MPTCP socket can also be monitored like regular TCP socket. So um, once a, a socket is created, then the stack will create regular TCP socket uh, to carry the traffic. And this is done using the TCP ULP infrastructure. When a ULP creates a TCP socket, you can just monitor it using a SS command. And uh, what you will find here is uh, the ULP relative information. Uh, at the moment, you will only see this red, but uh, the message already contains some more stuff that can be used to troubleshoot your connection. Moreover, we are going to implement the support for uh, init uh, rec. And uh, with that, it will be possible to know which processes are uh, opening uh, MPTCP socket. So, once uh, an MPTCP starts transmitting packets, you can use TCP dump to uh, sniff the packets, and you will see MPTCP related information in the TCP dump output. There's also Wireshark support, and this is an example of three way handshake where uh, the MPTCP client and server exchange their keys. Uh, this is an example of MPTCP v0, but soon TCP dump will uh, uh, accept the pull request that implements support for MPTCP v1. So it's code is already there. OK. So now that we know how, packet, uh, how the MPTCP can uh, be operated and how packets are there, we can just use this information to do some basic testing. Why we are doing this? Because of sanity, because we are uh, touching the TCP protocol and we need to ensure that TCP will be still uh, bug free uh, even after our, our modification and also to test the MPTCP protocol and assess the um, correct implementations versus the IETF standard. So let's see how Packet Drill is and how it works. So uh, Packet Drill has been developed by Google uh, to do unit tests for the TCP protocol. As you probably know, the TCP protocol has many extensions uh, and uh, many options that are opt-in, that are optional, and uh, there is a test suite for that. So it provides a coverage for most or probably all the TCP features and for the socket API. With Packet Drill, there is already um, out of three fork of the project that is meant to do the unit testing for the out of three module. Um, we cannot use that tree at all uh, for uh, uh, the MPTCP net next because uh, the socket API is different. And uh, moreover, that one does not support V1 yet. Uh, probably will not support uh, uh, V1 at all because uh, we are trying to make this uh, working for both versions, out of three and in three. Okay, now, how packet drill works. So, uh, so this is a typical command line that I do in order to run a script. Packet drill is made uh, with a, um, a program that parses a script. The program uses a, a packet socket to inject packets and to sniff packets from the kernel that we are testing. And uh, there is the possibility within the same scripts to send system calls. So you can open a socket, 
You can listen, you can bind, you can accept, you can read, write, you can do poll. It's, everything can be done in the same script. And uh, this is uh, typically what happens. The script do, does the parsing, then packet will reads the line and uh, determines whether to send an inbound packet. The terminology is that inbound packets are packets directly directed to the kernel or just receive an outbound packet, so from the kernel to packet read, and this is done with a dissection, so <coughs> we can understand whether the uh, packet is uh, correct. And then, of course, with packet read, you can send system calls to the kernel under test. Now, this is an example with the TCP protocol. Uh, it's a, a real test done by the TCP. I just reinvented it in order to be able to explain this. So, uh, it's a server, uh, the kernel under test runs as a server, we uh, open a socket, bind and listen, and then uh, on uh, this packet, we send a scene packet and start the tree we handshake. So, the kernel is a server and packet drill acts as a client. Once the connection is accepted, I try to forge a bad packet. It's this purple one. This is a bad packet, why? Anybody knows? It's a bad packet because it does not act anything. So it has no flags. It does not act. And the standard says that this is a bad packet and we should discard the data from this packet. How do I test this? By checking how many packets are in the socket queue. If the expected pack, the uh, packets in the queue are zero, this is the expected value. And the test goes on. Now I send the same packet with the good flags. So I test the act flags, and it acts exactly the data that have been received. Now I repeat the same IOTL to check if there are packets in the queue. So this is the correct way, and now I can read this 1,000 bytes. And the test passes. Yes, it passes. Okay, so what we do now with MPTCP, uh, I took the out of three code and rebased it over the latest uh, drop from Google. Uh, and uh, I did some modification to have it dealing with the uh, MPTCP socket with the new number. And uh, after that, uh, um, uh, we had the support for uh, the version one of the protocol and uh, started adding some tests. We had the test for the MP capable option. We had the test uh, for the DSS and basic support for the uh, DSS, which is the data plane. So, uh, by the way, this one is uh, the repository where you can uh, download the latest packet drill. And here is something similar to the test you watched before. But it's related to the three-way handshake of uh, an MPTCP socket. So as you can see, there is a server on the first four lines. And there is a three-way handshake. But now we can see that we are dissecting and uh, injecting MPTCP option in the MP capable. Uh, so also in this case, I have to put a bad packet. And uh, the very first test was to try to inject a packet with the wrong MPTCP version. Here the standard uh, mandates that we should uh, fall back to TCP, so not resetting the connection, but fall back to TCP, and not talk MPTCP anymore for this socket. So I still checked the connection, and uh, I checked if the data plane is functional, so I'm able, uh, able to write and read bytes from this socket. Uh, but uh, I will not uh, transmit uh, nor receive uh, any DSS option. Okay, the DSS option. So, um, the DSS option, as you probably know, um, controls the traffic plane. So, it controls the mapping of data uh, between the TCP level and the MPTCP level. Doing a test, we want to control if the data sec sequence signaling is correct. And uh, um, so 
this is an example of uh, testing the uh, DSS option. After the three-way Yang shake, we do a write, and uh, we expect a packet having the DSS option that uh, acts uh, a certain amount of data. And then we do a read and check if the uh, data arc increases by the number of data that we read. So in this case, the MPTCP specification allows uh, different formats for the DSS header. So uh, there are many options. You can use uh, uh, DSN and the DX values made of uh, uh, 32 or 64 bits in any combination. So it's very, very likely to, to find bugs here. And maybe we found many. OK. Now, what about MPJoin? Because MPTCP is multipat, and we want to test multipat. Uh, amongst the MPTCP option, MPJoin can be used to join an existing connection. So once an MPTCP socket is open, you can create another flow, and you will see the MP join option in the packet. Well, uh, this is done in the out of three module using a sort of hint, which is this green word that you see there. Um, so um, uh, the out of three module tends to uh, open a different socket from user space for each subflow, and then join them, them together. Uh, so typically, the out of three module uh, wants to send uh, a hint to the parser, saying, OK, this packet is destined to socket number five. Of course, this cannot be done in the um, NetNext MPTCP implementation, because since we are using the TCP uh, ULP, uh, sockets are handled by the kernel, and uh, the user will only hold the MPTCP socket handle. So this one cannot be parted as is to the uh, NetNext implementation. Uh, we are implementing a way to um, uh, allow um, testing multiple sockets simultaneously. That would uh, uh, improve also the capability of testing TCP. And uh, of course, it will allow to um, test the MP the MP join. Uh, scenario. Next to come, what will be next? We will be uh, um, implement MP join uh, scenarios, uh, like I said before, and then we will implement uh, what is missing uh, from uh, the code to the spec. So uh, we will be uh, testing the add other option, uh, MP reset uh, option also, the ladder. And of course, uh, once we add a new option, we will uh, increase the test coverage. We expect the test coverage to be very, very big. And uh, like I said before, uh, any contribution is very welcome. So if you find out some tests that can fit packet uh, uh, for please do a pull request. Uh, OK. I think that's all. Do you have any question? One candy, one candy, okay. First, first, first you. Uh, how about IP version 6 uh, with multi-path TCP? Um, so I know that version 0 was not capable of that, uh, but version 1, how is, it about, how is it about that? Okay, so the question is, uh, uh, what is the state of MPTCP protocol versus IPv6 connectivity? Uh, well, if it is working with IP version 6. Yes. So the out of three module uh, resist, registers itself as a protocol both for uh, affinet and affinet six. So it's meant to work uh, with the IPv6, uh, IPv6 protocol since the very beginning. Uh, the, 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 this applies uh, to v0 and v1, but probably you will only see v1 if you test uh, an official Linux kernel because the implementation is starting from V1 protocol. Uh, by the way, uh, if you run packet drill, it's possible to see to test uh, uh, with the same script IPv4, IPv6, 
and uh, IPv6 map up to 4. So there is a good script that tests it all. Other question? Uh, okay, so the question is, uh, uh, do you plan uh, to enhance uh, IPERF uh, I or IPERF3 or NetPERF maybe also to um, add support for MPTCP? Theoretically, yes, that would be uh, an option. So it would just be a pull request in order to support the new IP protocol version on the socket, and that's it. But uh, our plan is also to have this uh, supported uh, in a seamless way. So using a BPF program, uh, you can overload the socket method, uh, catching the new IP proto and PTCP value. So once you see 262 in the IP protocol, the BPF program changes it to B6. And so using the same uh, uh, API, you use a TCP program, but uh, for real, the kernel is doing MPTCP. So that's it. That is what we are thinking about. The idea is to make a, a BPF program on top of a C group, uh, on top of a C group V2. Does this testing framework also enable you to do unloaded packets, or it's really packet by packet in the system calls? Uh, sorry, I don't get can the question. Can you send many packets, or it's, built, it's like sending one packet and then running system calls, or can you send a thousand packets? You can send also a thousand packets. So as soon as you do a write uh, in a packet driver script, if, the, uh, if you are writing enough bytes, then the kernel will send many, many bytes. And it supports GSO, so, uh, and TSO. So uh, if you send uh, a big uh, amount of data and the kernel has uh, TSO on, you will see a mega packet there. You can turn off TSO send a big amount of data, and we will have to uh, dissect um, as many packets as uh, they fit the size that you send. Question? Sorry, uh, you have to take hands, but otherwise the questions are not good. Sure, sure. Um, so uh, what about SCAPI? Because SCAPI does a similar thing to packet protocol. Okay, so the question is, uh, what about SCAPI? Because uh, SCAPI, can do the same thing as packet drill. Uh, yes, but it cannot do system calls. So it's very likely that you uh, can do a SCAPI script with the exact same functionality as packet drill. But uh, if you look at no, no, no. if you look at this oh this one. Uh, Doing a writer read with SCAPI is not that easy. You can inject a packet, build a packet and inject it over an ELF packet, but you cannot test the system calls. So the advantage packet is that you test packets and system calls together. More questions? Thanks a lot. <laughs>